Hi guys, today I'm taking a look at the T-Motor F40 2500 kV motors. So I've had these motors sat on the bench for a while now, so it's about time I get round to testing them. Now these were sent to me by T-Motor themselves, so thank you very much for that. And as you can see from this sticker inside, this is a testing sample, so not the uh, end production model. And as I mentioned earlier, these are the 2500 kV variants. They are also bringing out the 2800 kV motors, so we'll have to watch out for them in the future also. Just like a lot of other motor manufacturers, they're dressing it up in this uh, fancy box, which is a bit of a waste, but I suppose it's nice, and maybe you can use it later on to hold some of your screws and things. So looking at the stats, uh, 2500 kV, we have a stator diameter of 22 and a stator length of 5mm, hence the 2205 size. Throwing them on the scales, we get a weight of 29.9 grams, which is a little bit just over average for these kind of motors. But don't forget that also includes the cabling. Uh, most of us will end up shortening this to our ESCs. So let's take a closer look. So we've got the gold on black, which is actually quite nice. Uh, I like it when the motor manufacturers uh, add a personal touch and make these actually look a little bit better than just kind of plain black or one color. Much like the uh, RS2205 red bottoms did, putting a red bottom on the bottom of the motor actually makes them stand out and people spot them from a mile away. And we have a little bit of Chinese writing there, which I think means FPV racing. So as I move up onto the top now, where you can have a look at the shaft, you'll see that it's actually a hollow shaft. This is apparently more stronger than a solid shaft, and it also helps dissipate some of the heat and reduce the weight. And you'll notice that the top of the bell housing also has some ridges in it just to give a bit more grip on your propellers. Apparently the gap around the bell housing is also designed to help suck in some of the air and dissipate it through the top of the motor, again trying to keep these motors cool because they are spinning at such a high rate. Here I'm just trying to force the bell housing down onto the uh, bottom connector just to see if it does actually cause any rubbing and uh, as you can see we didn't get any bent shafts or anything as I'm doing that. So let's strap these to the test bench and see what kind of figures we get. Now as with all of my thrust tests I'm going to be using the same batteries which is the Turnigy Nanotech 1300mAh 4 cell. And the first test is going to be using a 5045 dowel prop. This is the most commonly used prop by myself just because it's extra durability. The amount of times I've smashed this through trees and come out the other side is uh, extremely surprising. So the Dow 5045 gave us 1045 grams of thrust, 25.44 amps, 398.6 watts and an efficiency of 2.6 grams per watt. Now we're going to move on to a Mr. Steel HQ Tri-Prop. There's no difference from this to any other HQ Tri-Prop, it's just branded Mr. Steel because it's red. So the tri-prop managed to pull 1,091 grams of thrust, 28.99 amps, 449.9 watts, and an efficiency of 2.42 grams per watt. Now during the recording of this video, someone did ask me if I could spin a 4-inch prop on it because it is a 2500 kV motor and uh, what kind of figures will we get, so that's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> So I used a Dow 4045 and we pulled 721 grams, 22.78 amps, 353.5 watts and an efficiency of 2.30 grams per watt. I went on to test plenty more propeller combinations but nothing really blew me away. Here I used a two blade HQ5040 composite, so we pulled 959 grams, 23.68 amps, 374.3 watts and efficiency of 2.56 grams per watt. Now thrust tests aren't the be all and end all of these motor tests, you really need to get out and fly them, so that's what I've done here in my local park. So to quickly run you through some of the other parts used, I'm using a bird's eye bumblebee frame, a standard TBS power cube, Dal 5045 bullnose with a HS1177 camera going to a 200 milliwatt Aeon way. Now 
Now I was really enjoying this flight. Normally I worry a little bit with high KB motors because I feel like they don't spool up quick enough to sometimes get to their maximum RPMs, but I wasn't having any of those problems here. I had just changed some of the rates and PIDs as well, so I wasn't fully used to how the machine was reacting, hence me being a little bit jittery. Anyway, I'll just be quiet for a moment so you can listen to these motors. So that flight went pretty well and overall I'm very happy. Uh, most of the shakes and things were down to just my ability to fly with the new settings and I can't really say it was the motor's fault. I find using high KV motors that it's easier also to tune the quad itself uh, rather than the low vibrations you get from the lower KV motors. I've personally shied away from some of these high KV motors just because of the inefficiency of them. But when you really need that power and speed, then there's no substitute really for it. So to summarise, I'm going to give two big fat thumbs up for these motors. I've got nothing to complain about with them and they work very well. And I don't see them coming off my quad anytime soon. So that's all for today's video guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. Yeah.